The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following Diamond and Platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. <laughs> hey everybody, um, so I am Mark Michelson. I am a software developer at Digium. Uh, for those of you who are expecting a talk today by Brian Johns, uh, he was unable to make it to this conference, so I'm filling in for him. So what we're going to talk about today is asterisk SCF, what it is and how it's going to make an impact in the world of open source software and telecommunications and just in general communications worldwide. So to understand asterisk SCF, I'm going to talk quite a bit here, actually, about the project that came before it, Asterisk. And I shouldn't say came. It's still being worked on, actively developed, and everything. Um, but Asterisk, I mean, it started in 1999 and is still going strong here in 2011. Uh, so for those of you who aren't too familiar with Asterisk, I want to go over a little bit, you know, why is Asterisk just, it's a huge deal, and I'm going to show you why. So first of all, we've... Uh, done some statistics gathering and found that there are approximately 9,800 active development participants right now. That's a huge number for an open source project. And even more astounding, the asterisk.org membership is at approximately 73,000. So to give you an idea, again, of how big that is, that's enough people to fill up Lambeau Field in Green Bay, Wisconsin, where the Packers play. And so while we're talking about hypothetical situations like filling up stadiums and such, uh, we can talk about, you know, what, you know, what might you do if you had a million servers? What could, what could you do? Well, you could have essentially a Google, a Google's worth of servers. You could have two times what Microsoft has. You could actually start up 10 Facebooks with a million servers. Well, what we found, though, is that worldwide, we've counted approximately a million servers running asterisk. And in fact, to see the distribution of it, uh, we have this map here which shows the countries that are running Asterisk right now uh, are in orange, and the ones that are grayed out, we just don't actually know if they're running Asterisk or not, but we suspect they probably are. And they're not just running Asterisk, they're constantly running it. In fact, we predict uh, that approximately 400 calls per second are being made on average around the world using asterisk servers. So it is, in fact, a really big deal. So when you start talking about how great asterisk is, you might say to yourself, well, why in the world would there be this new project, this asterisk SCF project? Well, let's talk about that a little bit. So, the community is the driving force behind everything, of course. And the community has contributed a whole lot to Asterisk. They've done great things for it. And the thing is, though, the community has grown. And they have more sophistic sophisticated sets of needs. So um, this, we couldn't predict the future. If, you, if any of you know the story behind Asterisk's uh, inception, uh, you know, it's not as if there were a group of people who sat down and said, you know what, I'm going to make myself an open source you know, telephony communications project, and it's going to be huge. Instead, what happened was uh, the CEO of a small company decided, I need a PBX, I'm too cheap to buy one, I'm going to write my own. And so since then, it's just been thanks to the community and, and other people being interested in it that it's grown to what it is today. The problem is, the future is just, it's a whole lot more than just phones. It's all about unified communications, as they say. It's all about video, it's about messaging, it's about presence, and all of that. 
So uh, the community has been saying for a while now, they've been telling us, you know, we need this and we need that. And in a lot of cases, when they ask us, you know, they say, we need this feature added to Asterisk, most of the time we'll jump on it and we'll say, we can do that, we're gonna do that, here you go. And the problem, though, is that there's, you know, several of these features, though, that would require us to just pretty much tear the entire code apart in order to do it. So the problem is we, we didn't want to do that because if we were to do that, then would our product actually be asterisk anymore? Or would it cease, or would it actually be something completely different? So, instead of just completely ripping apart asterisk to try to give the features that people wanted, we decided to do something radical. Instead, we created a brand new project called the Asterisk Scalable Communications Framework, also known as Asterisk SCF. It's a completely new project from Asterisk. It's not an add-on or any, well, I mean, it can be used in addition to Asterisk, but it's not necessarily just a software add-on for it. It's completely separate. And Asterisk SCF has goals in place, uh, specifically for performance, for scalability, fault tolerance, and extensibility. So uh, for those of you who may be sort of blurry about what the difference is between asterisk and asterisk SCF, there's, a, there's an analogy I'm going to use here. It's, a, um, it's a, a kit car versus parts. So with asterisk, what you get is you're buying essentially a kit car. You can use the parts to your desire to make pretty much any sort of car you might imagine. You can make a, you know, a little, you know, a little coupe, you can make a sedan, you can make a sports car, you could, you know, with a lot of effort, you could even make it into a bus, that sort of thing. But you're not really gonna be able to expand beyond that. With asterisk SCF, instead, you're getting a collection of independent parts, which you go make a small coupe or a sedan or a bus with, but you could also make a speedboat, or you can make a spaceship, or you can make a giant robot, whatever you wanted to do. Uh, another analogy is, um, if you take out this amazing van here and you decided, I really want to modify this to have more capacity. I want it to be able to do more. I want to, I want to make it do, do more than what it currently can right now. The problem is you would end up with this awful Franken van thing <laughs> and it really, <laughs> and the problem is it just wouldn't be, you know, what it is that it, it, it might sort of do what you want, but it would be kind of ugly. With asterisk SCF, you can think of it more like a train, for instance, where uh, if you need to add more to it, it's just as easy as adding new cars, new cars into the middle, and it can expand as much or as little as you want. And in fact, like with a train, you could even put new cars in while the train is actually running on the track. So asterisk SCF is a distributed application. Uh, so here's what a distributed application looks like. This may not make a whole lot of sense at the moment, but uh, we're going to be breaking this diagram down piece by piece here in just a moment. So first, the first goal we talked about was how asterisk SCF is meant to be very, uh, you know, it's supposed to have very good performance. So if we look at this diagram here, um, you can see that uh, we have uh, four different components here. We've got a session manager, a routing component, a bridging component, and a media services component. And um, in this scenario, you can see that there's a single phone over there, which is supposed to represent, you know, not a whole lot of people using the system necessarily. And uh, the thing is, though, each of these components, rather than being, say, loadable modules into, you know, one application, each one is an independent application, meaning that each one could potentially be running on its own core or own CPU of a computer somewhere. But asterisk SCF uh, is scale, scales well, too. Uh, because they are their own applications, I mean, of course, obviously, you could run them all on the same server, but as your load increases, it's very easy and just works natively to instead, for instance, in this case, we've moved the session manager and the media services onto their own servers while the routing and bridging are still on one server together. And then as you grow even more, you can, just, you can actually add in multiple servers to use for the, the session manager and media services, and now you can start putting your routing and bridging services on separate servers. 
uh, one of the big things that people have been asking of us for many, 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 many moons now is uh, for fault tolerance. So asterisk SCF is designed to be fault tolerant. And the way it does this is through state replication. In other words, every, every service, rather, that we write is uh, capable of replicating its state to a backup server so that if the primary were to go bad, uh, the backup would have all the information currently about whatever is going on and could be failed over to. And asterisk SCF is designed to be extensible. So even while you have all these services running, it's perfectly possible for you to, you know, upgrade a component or download some amazing new uh, application that someone has written or possibly that you've written yourself and just place it into the cluster and have it just show up and be available. So the uh, extensibility part is, uh, is, in my opinion, probably one of the biggest things that I, I think is neat about asterisk SCF. So um, one of the things we ha we're going to have is just published and well-documented APIs uh, so that it's very easy to, um, to, to do what it is you need to do and possibly just, and just hook yourself into the system as necessary. Uh, extension points. Uh, extension points is a fancy way of saying hooks. Uh, basically, if, uh, if we have, we, ha we write our own components uh, and there are times where we realize that, you know, uh, we've hit this point in the processing where really this is a business logic decision. So, we have the ability for you to hook in in a lot of places and, and affect the operation that way without necessarily having to write your own entire application. Uh, we also, uh, as part of our goal, are going to be operating, uh, the software is gonna be able to run on many operating systems. And um, another thing that's kinda cool is the fact that our APIs are going to be uh, available in many programming languages as well. Um, if you want a current list of what those are, that includes uh, C++, Objective-C, Java, Python, uh, PHP, Ruby, and I think that's it. So I've got a slide here about the asterisk SCF architecture, and I'm afraid it's probably mostly unreadable to people in here. Um, but, so I'm just going to skip that one. <laughs> And, uh, but the thing is, the, one of the big things, of course, I, I actually mentioned this earlier, is that we don't put business logic in here. Instead, that is up to the people who are writing application for asterisk SCF. So it, it actually reminds me a lot of uh, Mad Dog's talk about how there's no two business cases that are ever the same, and so we're trying to avoid the whole square pegs in the round holes like he had. Instead, we're trying to make it sort of maybe have, be small and expand into the round hole as, as, uh, as the customer wants it to. Um, so be prepared for this next slide. I apologize for it. But here we go. Asterisk SCF 1.0 plan features. Okay. <laughs> the point is, it's pretty featureable. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to just talk uh, about a couple of bullet points here. Um, on the left-hand side, uh, one of the big things you'll see is it says session-oriented communications, and below it it says SIP and ISDN. So, of course, uh, being that asterisk is what spawned asterisk SCF, we, of course, want to be able to support uh, any sort of session-based communications. And so initially, we're going for, of course, the telephony side of things. So we're um, orienting the most common, uh, or we're, sorry, writing the most commonly used uh, protocols uh, to be used first. So uh, we've already written uh, SIP support, and ISDN is uh, the next planned one. Um, and also on the right-hand side, you can see uh, message-oriented communications. So we also want to be able to have a, an API, a stack available for doing, say, instant messaging with the system as well. So um, that's... Uh, you know, so we're planning that in from the beginning rather than trying to shoehorn it into an old project. Um, the only other thing I wanted to point out on this, um, and of course it's on the left-hand side, so it's in the very tiny font, but there is, um, there is a, uh, a bullet point on there that says all components provide interfaces for dynamic configuration. 
Um, that's one thing that, to be honest, is uh, something I think is really cool with Asterisk SCF is that all components are just designed up front to be able to just receive uh, and update their configuration in real time as necessary. Uh, so Asterisk SCF, of course, can be used for, you know, anything you can think of used for communications, but here's some potential, you know, what we expect it to be used for mostly. Uh, service provider networks, of course. Um, right now, there's a lot of service providers that use asterisk, but um, for the volume and the uh, reliability that they require, we expect that asterisk SCF would fit in very well there. Uh, enterprise communications. Uh, that's a fancy way of saying really big companies. In other words, uh, the distributed nature of asterisk SCF would fit in well for, say, multinational companies and such, uh, better than, say, trying to just put in, uh, trying to uh, cluster asterisk servers or other open source uh, uh, communication software themselves. Cloud applications. They're all the rage. And, of course, uh, contact centers. Uh, by that, I suppose that means, uh, say, like your uh, tech support type places and such. They're already using asterisk. Uh, the reason why asterisk SCF would possibly work really well for them is the fact that the APIs published uh, for asterisk SCF would allow them to be able to put their very specific business logic uh, into play instead of how trying to fit into what might be offered by other uh, open source uh, PBXs. So, for those of you who think this project sounds cool, I want to take a look into it, I want to get involved, there are several ways you can do so. First of all, there are some websites. Uh, asterisk.org is the home of both the Asterisk and Asterisk SCF projects in which you find lots of information, including how to download and, how to, and some development tips there. But what's even better, I think, is the wiki that we have now. Uh, wiki.asterisk.org is also, it's a uh, wiki about both the asterisk and asterisk SCF projects. Uh, it has a whole lot more about development and, and uh, process and how to get your code there and how to download and how to install, all that fun stuff. Uh, asterisk SCF has bi-weekly developer conference calls. They're on uh, Thursdays every two weeks and it alternates between being in the morning uh, Eastern uh, standard time and in the afternoon Eastern Standard Time so that it can accommodate people in time zones, you know, outside the United States well. Uh, and there's a couple of IRC channels on the Freenode uh, network. Um, we have pound asterisk SCF and pound asterisk SCF dev. Um, pound asterisk SCF dev is one of those, if you're interested in being a developer on this, I would highly recommend being in that channel because that's where the majority of communications take place and decisions can be made uh, there and, and uh, about things that can just change radically all of a sudden. And if you've read it on the wiki, you might go, wait, that's not how it works. And we said, well, we just changed it in the dev channel. So thank you very much. That's all I have to say about Asterisk SCF. I imagine you guys have a bunch of questions, so please feel free to ask. Are there any questions? Oh, I see. Uh, you in the back there. The question was, how did our lessons from how the community was involved in Asterisk shape the way that we are going forward with Asterisk SCF? Is that correct? Okay, just make sure. Okay, so basically the community involvement in Asterisk, uh, geez, that's a very difficult question to answer, to be honest, on the spot. But I would say that the community with Asterisk, I mean, the big thing we, we one of the biggest things that we did with Asterisk, of course, is that, like I said, it, was an, it started up with one guy trying to write his PBX for his company. And I imagine in the beginning, there wasn't a whole lot of community involvement. He didn't go around and start asking people, hey, what features would you want out of this if you were going to use this? So one of the things that we did before doing any sort of the design work 
is we said, you know, we got people in who we know are using Asterisk uh, today and who are using it for large-scale deployments and who are, you know, who may have actually written their own ways of failing over things in Asterisk. And we said, what are the features you want and what, what can we do with this to make it so that you would want to use it? And so we took their directives in order to come up with our 1.0 feature list. Now on the other hand, there are a lot of people out there who are very opinionated on things that honestly, it's not, but like for instance, uh, we, knew, we, we knew without any community input that you know, we were going to have this, uh, we were gonna write primarily in C++ as our development language. We knew people, there were gonna be people who like that and people who don't, but the thing is, we just said, that's not an important, that's not worth arguing about with the community. It's nice to hear input on that, but it's not gonna be uh, you know, something that they're probably going to be convincing us of otherwise. So it's a matter of listening to what features they want without trying to focus on, say, the bike shed topics. Have you ever heard that sort of uh, terminology before? So uh, I guess, oh, you haven't. Okay, uh, the bike shed by the way, is uh, something that the, someone on the subversion team talked about at a, at a talk back a few years ago. And basically it's where uh, instead of talking about the house that you're building, people start arguing over what color to paint, to paint the bike shed. And, and all this attention goes there as opposed to on the more massive problem of the house itself. So, that's, so we tried to focus less on those issues while focusing, of course, more on the house. Uh, are there any other questions? Uh, yes, Jeff. Uh, Jeff asked the question, what is the license? Uh, the license is GPL version two. Uh, it's dual license, GPL version two and uh, commercial license as a possibility as well. Um, for more information on that, you can find that on the uh, wiki that I uh, showed earlier. Uh, he asked if there were any particular reasons why we did or did not choose uh, V3. And to be perfectly honest, I do not know that. Uh, I was not involved in the licensing decision. I just know what was picked. Okay, uh, yes sir. Uh, the question was, is there plans to replace asterisk with an asterisk SCF application? Uh, the plan right now is for the two to coexist. Uh, the idea is, of course, that asterisk SCF is, uh, you know, doesn't have nearly as many features as asterisk does, uh, but the idea is that it, should, it would be a very performant and very reliable communications uh, form. So perhaps it could be used, uh, for lack of a better way of putting this, say, at the front end of communications while asterisk is contacted to be using things such as its voicemail and its uh, cues and... Uh, any other features that perhaps Asterisk SCF does not implement at the moment? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, uh, he asked to, if I could be more explicit about the relationship between Asterisk and Asterisk SCF. Uh, so when you say relationship, I, do you mean like how it's used or do you mean like as in the development communities or what is it you mean exactly? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's 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 talk about that. Okay. Um, so the thing is, uh, there's no secret that you know uh, Asterisk and Asterisk SCF are sponsored by the company Digium uh, Incorporated. And the thing is, Digium's marketing department, when coming up with the name for the new project, was very insistent that. Uh, it have the name asterisk in it because asterisk has a lot of recognition. As I told you before, it's, it's a really big deal, right? So uh, because it has all this recognition, we want people to recognize that asterisk SCF is being developed by the same people and has the same you know, history as, well, not same history, that's a bad way of saying it, but it, it's basically they should have the name association that you know, it's being made by the same people and people who like asterisk should also just be like, Asterisk SCF as well because they like asterisk. So that's, that's how that came about. And SCF actually, Scalable Communications Framework, of course, describes what it is, but they also wanted to have an acronym that they couldn't find any dirty meanings for. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, people have run, have run asterisk on very small hardware. Um, uh, so. Well, I'll be perfectly honest with you about this. I am unsure because we really haven't done uh, a whole lot of benchmarking and, and that sort of thing. Um, I would suspect that it inevitably is going to be larger than asterisk, but I don't necessarily know by how much. Um, I know that for our uh, demonstration at Astrocon last year, hey Russell, what, what sort of hardware was that running on at Astrocon? Okay, but obviously they're not, they're not little routers or anything, but I mean, it's, it's not like you're gonna require, you know, a huge, you know, mainframe server or anything like that. Right. Okay, yeah, that is a very good point. So it, for those who couldn't hear Russell, he was saying that, you know, don't, don't try to think of asterisk SCF as like replacing asterisk or anything like that. So if you currently were going to use asterisk on some small platform, say like, you know, on uh, you know, a WRT Cisco router or something like that, you know, you go ahead and do it, keep doing it because we're not really trying to replace asterisk by any means. Uh, any further questions? Did you have one? Yes. The question was, does Asterisk SCF use dial plan? Well, uh, basically uh, in, our, in the slides that I showed you, there was a, a, a service running that was called the routing service. And the routing service is responsible for either routing sessions or routing messages. And it's likely that that will probably be the most customized component that people ever use because essentially that's where they're probably going to put their business logic to determine how to uh, how to route the call. So there's, there's several options. First of all, you could write your own routing component that just you know, fills in the APIs that, you know, the, that it does implements what the interface for routing is supposed to do. Um, and that way, you, know, you have a whole lot of control. You can write it in one of the many programming languages that Asterisk SCF supports. And as long as you're a programmer, that's fine. Um, we also have what's called the basic routing service. I mean, all it'll do is just do lookups uh, based on, you know, the, you give it a number and it'll tell, it'll figure out which uh, session gateway to contact for that number. Um, and, uh, and it can also, I do believe, it can call out to a Lua script just so you can sort of say, give it a, a yes or no sort of thing. So if you have further uh, rules behind whether someone should be contacted or whether a call should be routed, you can, you can do it in the Lua script, but it's not very flexible. The idea is just basically to show how the routing service works. And in fact, uh, in our Git repos, if you check out the routing repo, they, the, the idea is, like we, we kind of know that that's gonna be something that a lot of people write their own routing uh, service. And so we've actually implemented a sample, sample routing service in Java and Python, just so that people can see uh, you know, kind of, they can visualize it a little better. They can say, oh, that's what I need to do. Okay, and here's where I'd put in, you know, my database calls to figure out, you know, whether this person can be contacted right now or what time it is or whatever it is you're gonna do before uh, you decide whether to route a call or not. Uh, as far as actually whether it will use asterisk to dial plan language, uh, there are no plans to implement that right now. Uh, so it's not like you could take your asterisk dial plan and just plug it into asterisk SCF. Um, mainly because, honestly, <laughs> most of us feel like the asterisk dial plan language is a little bit, uh, you know, trying to do more than it should. Um, and, and since there are all these programming languages out there that do things, you know, really well anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's probably the majority of people would be fine just, you know, like I said, writing it in Python or Java or something like that. Yes, it is very possible for someone to either uh, implement a, an extension point or write a routing component and publish it out there that actually, you know, can call out to an asterisk dial plan uh, file to figure out how to route a call. So it's certainly possible. Are there any other questions? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, Eeks is, uh, 
uh, by the way, that's the inter asterisk exchange protocol. And uh, currently, there is no plan to implement it for 1.0. Um, it may come up in a future version. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the question was about fault tolerance, and he asked if, uh, if uh, a box were to fail, would the session stay up? And actually, yes, that's the idea behind it. Now, one thing to mention is that all asterisk SCF does is replicate the state of the call to another box. As far as something detecting a failure and, and passing it over, that's not actually built into asterisk SCF because our logic was there are already lots of software that does that and can probably do it a lot better than we could do. So, uh, you know, there's, for our uh, demo at Astrocon last year, uh, that's actually the demo that we did, is um, we had a call up between two people and then switched off the power on one of the servers and then showed how he could still transfer the call to someone else and it worked just fine. And what we used to do that, uh, we used a few things. We used uh, Corosync and Pacemaker as the ways of uh, detecting the system's health and, and uh, giving the uh, backup server the IP of the old one. And uh, we also had a, uh, an option enabled in the kernel on the backup so that you could actually bind to an IP address that you didn't own, and it would be fine. And then it just worked, so it was pretty awesome. Yeah, and so the idea, of course, is you'll have, uh, so at the time, we only had uh, SIP uh, session, uh, uh, what do we call it, replication. And uh, so we did the, the transferring the call thing. But since then, we've also added it to, say, the media component as well. And so uh, Josh, one of, our, uh, one of my coworkers, you know, he got really excited because he was able to, you know, fail, you know, fail over the media component, and he just heard this little blip in the audio, and everything was back. It was really cool. Uh, are there any other questions? Oh, we got two. Uh, Jared first. So you, you talked about how we have the SCF engineer, we replace them for that, we replace them for that, we replace them for all the functionality on the, the cloud client applications and the virtual machine and just uh, add those together. Tell us some, what are some of the features that we have that the SCF does have at this point? Are we in the early stages of that? Okay. Well, okay, so one of the things, uh, so Jared is asking about, uh, so I, I've been saying things that Astro SCF doesn't have, but what does it have? Okay, try to, try to put some positive things out there, yeah? Um, so Astro SCF at the moment um, is, has, has well-defined APIs for session communications and has, has an implementation of SIP that's built on top of the PJ SIP uh, uh, framework. So pretty much, if you wanted to talk about it in comparison to Asterisk, I mean, it can do SIP calls, it can do transfers, and um, it also has support for a couple of things just because PJ SIP already has it. Things like, uh, for instance, uh, provisional acknowledgements, uh, PRAC, reliable, uh, reliable provisional responses, as they're called. Um, but the one thing, uh, a lot of it right now is near future type stuff. So for instance, uh, one of the things that's in my opinion, kind of a big one, is the fact that we're going to have an API for messaging communications. In Asterisk, they just now, in the newest version, the trunk right now, have put in uh, ways of, of routing uh, instant messages into the dial plan and such. Uh, but that's something that we want to have from the get-go um, and have it and try, and, and the big thing is, of course, by writing its own API, we can write a separate message router in, instead of having just the session router, and it can, um, you know, perhaps be a lot more flexible than, than otherwise. Um, so there's the messaging. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, for 1.0, um, a lot of, most of the 1.0 features are stuff that's just in Asterisk already, uh, with the exception of, like I said, just some things that PJSIP provides that Asterisk doesn't have, and um, the uh, messaging uh, communications framework. Um, but the big thing, and, but I guess, okay, so here's something else, I guess, because the big thing with Asterisk SCF also is just the fact that we have all these APIs published. So it's just a whole lot more, in my opinion, easily, easily extensible than, uh, than Asterisk is. So there's that too. 
Uh, yes, the APIs are docu well. The APIs have uh, Javadoc style documentation on them, but we haven't actually like run Doxygen on it to actually generate the docs yet. But you know that that'll be done, of course, before the release. Uh, other question? Uh, person in the back. Okay, so the question was about cross-platform and, and such. And um, the cross-platform uh, requirement was one that basically uh, Digium's uh, team of salespeople always get the question of when you know, looking at asterisks, they go, someone asks, does it run on Windows? And they always say, no, it doesn't. It only runs on Linux. And people say, oh, well, we're not going to use it then. And so um, the thing with asterisk SCF is, the thing is, we're not doing anything ourselves to actually, you know, make sure that it runs on Windows as well as Linux, as well as, you know, FreeBSD and all those. Basically, we're just choosing cross-platform libraries to use. The biggest thing we're using is a, a product by a company called Zero C called ICE. And ICE runs natively on Windows and Linux and Mac and iPhone and uh, Symbian and all these other systems. And so we just use what they have and we don't have to actually think about the whole operating system thing too much. There have been some things that have come up a few times that have been Windows specific problems, but the thing is we have a few developers now who develop primarily in Windows and so those things get caught immediately and get fixed up. Uh, other question? Jeff, did you have another one? <laughs> Manageability. Um, well, can't answer that exactly, um, but I would say that the, th the thing is that we do we are publishing uh, interfaces to be able to monitor uh, system health. As far as SNMP goes, uh, I'm not 100% sure uh, about the status of that or what the plans are. Um, anything else? All right. Well, thank you guys very much. It's uh, been fun talking to you. What about this? I can help with I like that. it. Help we you. have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? You gave me a I good found idea. problem. How do Let's you do that? that? It's like this. Well, I disagree. I disagree. Really cool with that. Let's put the word out. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you. OS. An OS that works the way that you do. 
across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP.